Hello, I'm Dr. Larry Carnes. Welcome to Spotlight TV. We're so excited and glad that you could join us today. And we have a very special guest, Mr. Carl Berryman. And we're going to be talking about 2025, a very exciting book that he's written. Mr. Berryman and your lovely wife, how are you today? Welcome to Spotlight TV. Thank you. Welcome. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Do us a favor. Introduce yourself to our viewing audience. Tell them who you are before we get into this fascinating book. Well, uh, I was a practicing veterinarian for several years. I was a large animal man in northern Montana. Decided during the Vietnam War that uh, there were other opportunities. Joined the Army. Liked it. Stayed for 22 years, retired in 93. Earned a master's degree in public health and epidemiology on the way. After I retired, I went to work in a state health department as an epidemiologist. We fully retired in 2003, moved here to Wyoming in 2005 and love it. Wow. That's fascinating. Into the military, a veterinarian, retired, writing books. I mean, that's a fascinating journey. Thank you for sharing that with us. This book, 2025, it says here, a surprise attack launched from the International Space Station will result in 95% of the urban and suburban U.S. population dying within two weeks due to starvation, violence, and the effects of radiation. I read that. I said, wow. Talk to us about that and share it with our viewing audience. Well, first of all, let me admit to a mistake. Uh, I spent the last three days reviewing a different book I wrote, 2023. Okay. So I will go ahead and try and address everything in 2025. Uh, yes, that is a, a reasonable scenario if we have a kind of electromagnetic pulse attack, which I described in 2025. Yes. Now you mentioned 2023. What's tell us what's 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 intriguing since you looked at that? What's intriguing and captivating about 2023? Well, 2023 deals with China exploding out of its borders. China has 20% of the world's population, but only can produce 9% of its own food. So therefore, it is a novel describing the plans and operations of China moving out of its borders to secure food for its population. Wow, now that's powerful because I can see how 2023 segues and brings us up to 2025. Absolutely. Yes, sir, fascinating job, outstanding writing. You mentioned something here, you say, in 2025, our cities will become jungles ruled for a short time by gangs that carve out their territory. And you say seeking food, water, plunder, and rape. I thought, wow, this is just going to be ravishing. Talk to us about that. A sufficient electromagnetic pulse that is of sufficient strength will destroy all digital and electrical uh, products, secure methods, all communications means, everything that is digital will be burned out. Electronics will burn, uh, the transformers on electrical poles will explode, uh, wires will catch on fire and melt and fall. It will be total chaos. We will be plunged to 150 years ago. Consider living on the fourth or fifth floor in a, an apartment building in New York City with no lights, no running water, no food. What will you do? My, 
That's a now, now that's a good question. When you can visualize that, and as you're describing that, I'm visualizing it and saying, my goodness, so you have total darkness, total chaos, as these things have, have occurred. You, now, now, here's something. You mentioned an e EMP attack will immediately magnetize all internal combustion engines, which you mentioned. You talked about that. You mentioned airplanes falling from the sky. I thought, okay, now I'm the one who fly on planes. I'm glad that's in, I'm, you know, I thought about that. And then you say something here that's quite fascinating about all unprotected vehicles will immediately crash due to loss of control. Talk to us about that, if you will. Well, first of all, it's the property of an electromagnetic pulse. Uh, all electrical equipment, all the digital equipment in every vehicle built since when, 1990, will burn. Uh, you'll lose your steering, your power brakes, everything. Engines will be magnetized. The pistons My. will not go up and down. So... I don't see how anything else is gonna, gonna stay. Uh, as for the airplanes in the sky, all their guidance and electronics are gonna be blowing. Yes, my, my, my. Now, now this, is, this is really fascinating here. Okay, now I see that. Now you talk about something. You mentioned China in 2023. I see here in 2025, you say China invades the US while Russia invades Europe. Fascinating. Talk to us about that though. Give us something that's gonna make us just salivate and want to get this book. Well, uh, that's just a concept that I envision. Uh, China will be tying down the Southeast uh, Asia. Uh, you are probably aware it is invading very quietly Africa. Uh, if the possibility of invading Europe for food, if look at uh, Russia's make capability right now, her military capability, she can't even handle the Ukraine. Wow. So uh, NATO is, in my opinion, a bunch of impotent people who have been depending on the United States for the last 40 years for their security. Uh, they have at the most 3% of their budget to defense. And most of them have not met that. Yes, yes, yes. And so with all of these things taking place, then you've envisioned and written so eloquently a futuristic concept of things that, can, that are going to take place. You laid it out so eloquently. And when you're doing this, it makes us take a look at something. Now, you mentioned here that really caught my attention. Quoting Albert Einstein, saying that he once remarked, I do not know with what weapons World War III will be fought, but I am confident that World War IV will be fought with sticks and rocks. I thought, wow. Talk to us about that. Well, uh, modern weapons, all as I said, all electronics, our uh, artillery systems are computerized today. Uh, the torpedo data comprehension uh, computers, they're all going to be burned out. We have to go fight a war on the level of the Civil War, if we even could get munitions. How much munitions do we have on hand? Uh, local citizen? Well, out here, everybody owns a gun. But New York yeah. City? <laughs> no way. So our army, how would it feed? How would it move? How would it defend itself? How could it fight? It would have to defend in place. My goodness. But we're looking at this fascinating book. You said that it's a story of survival. That is and when I looked at that, I said, wow, this is exactly what he's talking about. He's laying out something here. And if we would just use our imagination to envision 
the story that you so eloquently laid out, a story of survival. I'm fascinated now. We have a trained professional veterinarian who's a retired army veteran. And now you're writing this fascinating book that catapults us and takes us into the future. Talk to us about that. And what was the mindset as you began to, to write and script this book? Well, our armies today are very technological. Uh, much of that technology will disappear. Resupply will be impossible. When they, whatever ammunition, food, subsistence that they have is consumed, that's it. That army will not be able to travel as Napoleon said, an army travels on its stomach. It's going to be fixed in place. My. Yeah. The civilian population will be in a much greater world of hurt. When the ammunition is gone, those people in New York City or wherever, what are they going to do for fuel, even if they stockpile that food? If they lose the gas, they lose their gas heating, cooking, they lose electricity. We're not importing coal. What will we do for energy? What will the average guy on the street do? He won't have a clue. Yes. So now what I'm hearing is that technology and we've become so technologically dependent that should anything occur that disrupts that, we're going to find ourselves in a helpless state, a helpless situation. Well, that's probably what will happen. Uh, if I were a policeman, I'd go home and protect my family. I wouldn't be worried about the community. Oh, so now you're talking about priorities. Yes. If something like this occurs, now we're going to find that those who have committed themselves to protect and to serve the community will now refocus and commit themselves to protecting and serving their families should something as devastating as this occur. What would you do if you were a policeman in New York City? Protect my family. <laughs> Listen, we have about 90 seconds remaining. Do this for me. Take 60 seconds. Share with our viewing audience information about how they can, if there's an, a website, email, where they can purchase the book. Take 60 seconds and share that with our viewing audience. How should we do that, Barb? We, we have a website. Yes, we do. It's Carl Berryman uh, books dot net. Okay. And there we are on Amazon and as well as the other bookstores. It can be found in shortly in most bookstores, I believe. Um, yeah. To carry on what you spoke to before, um, Author Reputation Press is currently publishing the book. Okay. And we're, we're working to broaden that to other publishers. Um, the, the goal of the book is to explain what would happen and then through the eyes of the main character, you discover yes. what you can do to not only prepare, but to live and thrive in a given environment that's been essentially devastating. That is so powerful. We wanna thank you for being our special guest. Fascinating work, outstanding book, 2023 and 2025. We want to encourage our viewing audience to go and get that Amazon. You can get it also, look at the website and other places providing this book. I'm Dr. Larry Carnes. We wanna thank you for watching us here on Spotlight TV. Wanna thank our guests who've been with us. Thank you so very much for joining us. Thank you, it's our pleasure. pleasure. Make sure you join us again right here for Spotlight TV.